If you're watching this video, you've decided you want to use Apple Log and you've gone down the rabbit hole of color spaces and gamma curves and BT2020 and Rec709 and MP4 and M M M HEVC and all the other formats possible and you just go, you know, it's all too hard. I just want to shrew in the standard camera app and, and be done with it. But the truth is we're going to unpack a bit of that today because even for my own mental health, I decided to go for a walk because I forgot what colors even look like. So I've got my SSD, I've got some bread. We're going to record log in a few different codec formats. We're going to bring it into Final Cut. We're going to do a little bit of testing, see what I prefer. And I'm going to practice what I preach from my camera settings guide and the other videos. So if you haven't watched that, go check it out. Make sure to subscribe, make sure to like the channel and let's get into it. So I'm just going to explain quickly what I'm going to be running as a test. I'm going to go over here into settings and I'm going to go into the camera and I'm going to do my first video clip using the standard camera app recorded in high efficiency mode, HEVC. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another clip which is recorded with most compatible, which is a H.264 format. Jump over into the camera app and record a video clip. That's how normally most people shoot. No color grading, bang. I'm gonna see what that quality looks like. Then what I'll do is I'm gonna jump over into the Final Cut camera app. I'm going to record the file format in HEVC, H.265, in log, so Apple log. I'm gonna record a clip, and then what I'll do is I'm gonna plug an external SSD into it and record a clip using Apple ProRes. And we're gonna compare and see how to, all this comes together and edits in Final Cut Pro. In this video, well, take it easy, mate. I'm trying to film here, mate. In this first clip, we're recording with the iPhone camera app and it's recording in 4K, H.265, which is the HEVC format and no color grade. So Apple's standard Rec. 709 color profile and this is what most people shoot with. So I've exposed the image as best as I can, and this is how it looks like. In this shot here, I'm using 24 frames per second, 4K, in Apple Log, but recorded into HEVC, which allows you to record directly into the phone. And the benefit of this is we're going to see how well this grades in comparison to the ProRes that's 10 times larger. So in this shot here, I'm using Apple ProRes in 24p with it recording to the external SSD and in 4K. And we're going to see what this footage looks like and what we can do with it. Obviously, the exposure is slightly changing because we're using the Final Cut Pro app. Okay, editor Skaka here. And I'm going to show you some pretty interesting things. So the first stuff that I've done is I've brought in the video clips from my phone and the SSD into the computer. And if you want to check the information around the footage, there's a quick trick that you can do. Uh, when you open up the file in QuickTime player and you hit Command I, it actually brings up a little inspector window that looks like this. And you can see what the information is around the footage. Also, what I found is there's a website that you can go to, and this is the link, where you can upload the footage. And it'll give you a little bit more information uh, around what the type of footage is and some of the information that's that's there. So if you want to see what you've got and you don't know what the footage is, this is a good way to check. So let's jump into Final Cut now. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your project here is in Rec. 709 because that's what we're exporting to. That's the color profile that most TVs, phones, screens all can display broadcast standards, it's not HDR, it's just normal. That's step one. 
Then what we want to do is we want to make sure that the footage that we're bringing in is not being edited by uh, Apple in some weird way. And what I mean by that is when you click on the footage, you can go over here into your effects and make sure color conform is not on. We don't want any color conforming. We don't want anything done by Apple. Then also, if it looks kind of weird, if you jump over here into info, there's an option within this here where you can apply a camera LUT. We don't want to do that. We don't want this because this is going to cut the data and information off of the, the, the image that we've recorded and ruin our ability to pull from pull as much as we can. So what I've done is I've brought in these three shots. So the first shot is the one that's just straight out of camera in a high efficiency mode. The next one is in most compatible mode. And then the other one is in HL. Uh, it's in uh, from the Final Cut camera app using the uh, Apple Log profile. And then we have the second one, which is the ProRes file. Now, what I've done is I've added a LUT through the, the effects window and I've put it on here. And you might be wondering, well, where the heck do I get a LUT from for this footage? Well, guess what? If you go to Google and you type in LUT, you can download this one here from, from Apple. You've got to log in and that's in the developer settings and you get this LUT which converts this footage from its original state, which is Rec 2020, which is not the color profile we want, using mathematics into the Rec 709 output so we're bringing in that high quality footage and we're then going to be making adjustments now what i found really interesting and that's how i got this information here obviously on these different uh, clips but what's interesting is that when you shoot with the normal camera it's shooting in 8-bit when you shoot in um, h.264 which is the most compatible format it's also in 8-bit but it looks like there's like a different gamma curve and this is something you can test out yourself, but I am recommending using this because that gives you all the controls that Apple has baked in with, for example, like the audio in the studio mode and playing around with those type of things. So that was the only major difference. And it's a bit smaller file size. There's a better compression um, if you use the H.265. But that's just recording standard and we're recording log. So now if we jump over here into log, what I noticed straight away is that you are recording in 10-bit versus 8-bit. So that's straight away going to be a difference. Same HEVC, H.265 compression, and the color profile is that BT2020 Apple Log. But that, again, is not designed for Rec. 709. So that's why we're doing that conversion over here. What I also found is that you see here in the recording internally, it's recording in 420. 10-bit, where when you record ProRes into an external device, it's 422 and up to 12-bit. Now, I don't know exactly what bit it was. I try to get the information, but there is more information 100%. But, you know, you're talking two gig file versus a, you know, 100 meg file. So it's really important that you're kind of aware of those differences. So this is my recommendation here at the moment. And this is my recommendation here if you're just shooting straight out of the camera. But what I want to do is I want to see what we can do with this footage. So at the moment, this footage here is already in Rec. 709. So we don't have to actually do any conversions because the color space is already correct. So when we export this, it's going to look exactly the same. And what we can do is we can then, if we want, jump in here and we can add a correction. So we go, you know what, I think maybe I want to bring up the exposure a little bit. I want to bring down the shadows. And you can see here that I'm, I'm working with these waveforms where Rec. 709 sits between 0 and 100. So anything that's over is clipped and won't be displayed properly and whatever is underneath also won't be displayed properly. So really, if you want to maximize your footage, you really want to have it sitting within that range, right? But as you can see, the, ca the camera has already recorded and maxed out kind of that image. So you, you, what you got is what you got. You can, if you want, 
go in and now just using this footage you can add a lot if you want right into the into the footage you can go in here and you can go you know what like i want to do a i want to do a uh, you know a fuji look so let's uh, let's see if we can bring up like a we'll use this one here a steer so we want this look does this look right well to be honest to me it looks okay but it looks a bit harsh right all right but i'm not going to do too much color grading you can play around with this but as you can see you still have flexibility to do what you want so this one here we can do the same thing we can bring in a lot we can add the add the lot which is the same one from the other one there okay and it's pretty much looks exactly the same right there's a little bit of an exposure difference which is like i said it's through that camera but you can go in and you can adjust this slightly and you know see where it sits but as you can see on the scopes we don't have that much really information when you pull it around it kind of like just messes up the image and that's just because like i said it's already kind of done out of camera in in that file for you to share however when we jump over here to log <laughs> it's a different it's a different uh, it's a whole different ball game so as you can see straight away or from my from my view here and it's probably not going to show up excellently over youtube there is definitely more like clarity in the image it looks a lot more realistic there's no weird there's no weird dynamic there's no weird dynamic um uh, like like rendering in the shadows it just looks natural so it's not like the shadows are being boosted up and then the highlights it's like a very smooth roll off higher quality image what you would expect from shooting from a dslr or similar and that's just using log straight into the uh, phone and you're already getting a much better image i've applied obviously the lut and then now I want to improve on this image. So I'll go, you know, I'm going to put color wheels on. I'm going to make it look a bit moodier. And I'm like, wow, this image looks, looks really nice. And then if I go, you know what, I'm going to throw on a, on, on a stylized LUT. I want to put on the same looking, you know, uh, LUT as the other one. That versus th this is day and night. Yeah, it is day and night. Like this just looks proper, ama amazing, yeah. Now, if we jump over into the ProRes version, we can obviously do the same type of adjustment. We can go in here now and add the LUT and, can, and do the same style. So we can go over here, add the you know, Fuji LUT. Is there a difference between this and this? It's hard to, it's hard to say, right? From what I'm looking at, it has got more smoothness in the shadows and in the highlights versus this it still looks a little bit kind of like like a lower bit rate but that's what it is it's a compression you know and whenever you upload this to youtube or some type of app it's going to compress the footage anyway so is it a huge benefit having this well let's see what else we could do so for example if we bring up these mid-tones right the image is not falling apart it's still smooth like we can then you know bring down the shadows and bring down the highlights and wow like you're getting a an amazing shot okay and if we jump back over to this one here if we bring up the mid-tones and then we bring down the shadows again and then we bring down the highlights man it is it is similar it is really similar this one here for me it just looks like there's just a little bit more data in the image you know it's just going from it's just going from a a, a camera that's you know recording 100 meg to to 2 gig is it worth it i still think at the end of the day you can get a similar result just by using hevc and log recorded straight into your phone if you're really pedantic and you want to really blow things around you might be better off using the ProRes option with an external SSD if you really needed to from a professional standpoint you know the saturation we can boost it up here as you can see like nothing really falls apart like everything just looks smooth this one here if we boost up the saturation 
I don't know. Like I said, not not huge. What I'm just seeing is just less artifacting in the image. You know, all the highlights to shadows, just a bit smoother. Well, as you can see, when we go back over to these ones now, right? What is this? You know, what what the heck is going on here? You know, we bring this down, we bring the highlights down. It just, you know, it it, it doesn't. It grades okay, but it doesn't have the same. It doesn't have that same film look, you know, from the phone. Now using uh, Apple Log. Day and night difference. So if you want to go run your own tests, you can. Obviously, this is you know not an uh, not an exact scientific test because I didn't expose everything properly, and it's not in a, a studio lighting where you can go in and 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 change things and and you can see exactly how much noise and stuff is in the image. But I'm gonna go ahead and say just shooting log with HEVC straight into your phone is a huge step up than using a standard profile. And if you really want to, you can use ProRes in an external device. And that's what Apple is trying to give us, is just trying to give us control.